It's pretty well known at this point that I adore Car Quest, the game made by Izon. I had no idea why I loved the game so much when I started playing, and I think I initially chalked it up to just being a fun game. The movement is fun, the story is fun, the exploration is fun, sure, it's a fun game. That's not entirely why I like it, but it's definitely a part of it. As time went on though, I began to realize that there was something more. It took me years to even begin to wonder why I liked it so much, but as soon as I did, the game never left my mind. That led to hours of content on my channel covering the game from all different perspectives. I went through it as a game critic with inherent biases, I toyed with the idea of making a proper retrospective on the game rather than just leaving it as an hour and a half long rant as it exists now. I approached it as a speedrunner with my commentated speedruns and world records. I even created a mod for the game, which is the gameplay you're seeing in the background. Eventually, I was able to find a facet I could latch onto, something that held a modicum of my appreciation and borderline obsession with the game. That became my novel nostalgia video essay, a work that I hold to be near to my magnum opus to this day. Not only because I think it's well written, but because it covers so many things that have occupied my mind for so long, and weaves together an engaging narrative and waxes philosophical about a few video games from my childhood. Several months after that video came out, I realized that there was something more, and posted this paragraph to the eZone Discord server in the CarQuest channel. I sometimes forget how much of a death grip CarQuest has on my soul. I would think about playing it every now and then, seeing it in my favorites tab in my Steam library, but I would always find a reason not to. I already had the world record speedrun in both categories I like, and even if I didn't, I don't think I would be able to do much better without weeks, if not months of practice. I've played the game countless times, I know it inside and out literally, it can't offer me anything new. I decided to play it again today because I've been playing another car platformer recently, Park Up Car. Despite Car Quest not offering anything new, it offers itself wholeheartedly, without reservation and without apologia. This game is something else, and I have no idea why. I cannot get this game out of my head. Not because it's uniquely impressive or something, though it is unique, you can't deny that. That's certainly part of why I can't stay away from it for long, as well as what I highlighted in the novel Nostalgia essay, but there's something more than that. There has to be. Of course, at that point, I had no idea what that something else could possibly be, and all I could really do was hope that the actual answer could come to me eventually, similarly to how the thesis of the novel Nostalgia video came to me as I was watching the video essay on a whim. The thing is, this time I had no idea where to look, and my actual choices were more limited, primarily because I knew it was nothing covered in the novel Nostalgia video. Granted, it's not like I knew exactly what I wanted to cover in that video before I started writing it, but I digress. I knew whatever this thing was, it applied almost exclusively to CarQuest, if not entirely, though I could never come up with an example. That is, until one of my video essays I watched on a whim gave me a slight revelation. Mirror's Edge has that same quality, if less extreme. Mirror's Edge is unique in the same way that CarQuest is, with that visceral emotional effect, for lack of better terminology. Upon this discovery, I wrote another paragraph in the eZone Discord server. I think I'm starting to understand what the other thing is. The thing that draws me to the game over and over no matter how long I spend away from it. Mirror's Edge is the same way. It's unique in a specific way. It's impossible to replicate the feeling of the game because any attempt at that will only be a hollow imitation. Mirror's Edge Catalyst, while a decently fun game, failed to capture what Mirror's Edge did so beautifully. I didn't enjoy it nearly as much despite adoring Mirror's Edge and I could never really figure out why. I decided on a whim to watch a retrospective of Mirror's Edge by Josh Strife Plays, and it just kind of hit me. The beautiful simplicity of Mirror's Edge, its atmosphere and design, everything that makes it such a unique game is impossible to replicate. You can't take Mirror's Edge and add on to it without fundamentally changing what makes it itself. I have no idea why, but there's something that both of these games hold in common that makes them impossible to replicate or even imitate. I had also been playing a different car platformer called Yellow Taxi Goes Fruit. My attachment to car quest making me much more interested in car platformers more generally. YTGV is a lot less ethereal, if no more realistic, and focuses primarily on platforming and movement rather than the exploration. In this way, it's more focused and more deserving of the title of car platformer, simply because it wears that identity on its sleeve and focuses on it much more prominently. Car Quest is more of an exploration game that happens to have a car. It also interrupts you a lot less than Car Quest does, with no random interjections from Lord Blockstar, and no forcing you to return to the beginning of the hub area after going to the opposite side to collect a single artifact. I had also joined the Discord server for this game, and that server has a channel that's completely hidden unless you happen to be the last person to send a message to the general channel, at which time it gives you a role that allows you to access that channel and leave a message for future visitors. I summarized my thoughts in that channel in a more concise way than the eZone server. 
I wanted to elaborate on my thoughts and wasn't sure where, so here is as good place as any. I realize that I like car platformers because of car quests, not vice versa. And while I know a little of why I like car quests, there's a whole facet of its uniqueness that I haven't even begun to tap into. The only way I can explain it is by exemplifying its uniqueness. It's impossible to reproduce in the same way that Mirror's Edge is, I suppose. You can have a fun parkour game, even with the same or even just a similar aesthetic, take Catalyst for example, but it's still not the same. The same goes for Car Quest. It's wholly unique in the same way Mirror's Edge is, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I've played other incredible, arguably better car platformers, yet here we are with Car Quest dragging me back. So regardless of Yellow Taxi being a quote-unquote better game, the draw of Car Quest is not its uniqueness itself, but instead found within its uniqueness. I want to find it, but I don't know where to go from here. That said, Yellow Taxi is just as, if not more unique in aesthetic, and I don't know how to describe it, but controls, I guess? So there must be a specific thing that makes Car Quest unique, something I can feel is tied to the uniqueness of Mirror's Edge in the same way. At this point, I was stuck. I had no idea where to look for the next step. My intention in sharing my thought process in different places was to see what other people thought, to see if they could give me some sort of revelation or breakthrough. Maybe someone else would notice something I couldn't find. I was hoping something would stick out more to someone else than it did to me, being incessantly steeped in this thought process. Fresh eyes tend to pick up on details that those who have analyzed every detail have seen as part of the background noise. Unfortunately, no one specifically mentioned anything that led to a breakthrough, though someone did continue to pick my brain and offer their own thoughts. Mashiro responded with this message. I really enjoyed following your trail of thoughts. I haven't tried Car Quest, but I guess I will at some point. But I have the same feeling about Mirror's Edge. I also believe that game is unique in its own way, and after thinking about why, I realize that, to me, its uniqueness comes down to something that can be defined as personality. Sounds weird when applied to a piece of software, but bear with me. It's about the overall delivery of the experience. I mean, the graphics, gameplay, world building, backstories, and lore all come together. In some cases, it also depends on what you are looking for in a game at the time that you play it, much like songs or movies, I guess. Sometimes, some games manage to speak to players. It's also very subjective. That said, Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom has so many facets to its personality. I was still stuck though. I responded, rhetorically asking what makes it all come together so perfectly. What specifically causes it to be so dramatically unique? He ended up responding to this, though due to the nature of this channel, I didn't end up seeing the response for quite a while. If the answer to that was so easy to get, I guess we'd only have gaming masterpieces on the market, but I think it's really subjective. Thinking back to the games that evoke that feeling, I realize that they have almost nothing in common, except the genre sometimes. And I'm talking about several different genres too. Looking back on it, I agree with the sentiment, in that only a few games evoke the feeling, and the ones that do are entirely disparate from each other in almost every way. I'd say a good portion of the games I mentioned in my novel nostalgia video touch on this feeling at least, if not outright carrying a torch that burns bright with it. Super Mario 64 holds it a bit for me, as do Ocarina of Time and Dark Souls. Tetris does too, really hammering in the point that the genre isn't the defining feature. Arguably, it's simply being unique doesn't seem too important either. What with Ocarina of Time having it, but not Majora's Mask, for instance. So, what now? What do these games have in common that, ironically, makes them so unique? What subjective thing does Super Mario 64 have less of than Car Quest? There has to be something, but how does one even begin to find something like that? What do I look for? How do I even look for it? And here I was stuck, with nothing to guide me and nothing to look for. Or even a hint. About a month later, I was playing Pokemon Scarlet, hunting for a shiny Espeon in an outbreak, talking to one of my partners about art, how subjective it is, how I loved it simply because it can't be wrong, but also how flexible the definition of art is. My initial thought was that art was defined by intention, but I don't think that fully encapsulates what art truly is. Sure, a urinal can be art because the artist had an intention, they had a message to get across, but what about the things that had no intention as art? For example, most brutalist buildings aren't built for a reason other than utility. There is no intention in them being art, but cityscapes can be beautiful visually, and those that inhabit the brutalist buildings daily have stories to tell that are tied to those buildings. So is art in the eye of the beholder? I don't think so either, since that ignores the artist. Some people don't think a urinal should be considered art because they don't like it, but regardless, it's still art. My ultimate conclusion was that anything created is art. A tree is not art unless a hand planted it there. A rock is not art unless one shapes it, places it, or otherwise exerts their influence on it. Creation is art, and nature, while well, beautiful, has no reason to fall under that umbrella. There was something in that conversation though, something that happened to be what unraveled this entire mystery for me. Something that finally put my thoughts to rest and answered the question burning in my mind for years. Car Quest is art. Of course, the answer isn't quite that simple. I'd always seen Car Quest as a piece of art, as with all games generally. A piece of art doesn't have to tell a compelling story or a story at all to be art. Tetris has no story, yet it's one of the most masterful pieces of artistry in modern history, at least in my opinion. 
What really got me is the disparity between the intention of the creation of a piece of art and the effect that piece has on the consumer. This revelation came to me at 4 a.m. I was about to go to bed, so I didn't have time to write out this whole essay, but I did want to capture my thoughts in that moment. So I sent another message to the YTGV server so I could access the taxi cab and sent this message. I think I got it. Or at least, I'm much closer now. Both games make me feel something that I wouldn't attribute to the piece itself. Mirror's Edge is a driving force in my mind. It makes me want to do something, as nebulous as that claim is, despite it being a video game primarily created for doing the exact opposite. In the same way, Car Quest makes me feel intensely emotional, if I can't describe the specific emotion, despite it being, you know, a silly car game. They both stick in my mind so relentlessly, Car Quest more so, though likely down to the disparity in intention and effect. Car Quest is just silly, right? But its effect is so much stronger to me. Mirror's Edge is built on movement and the message is literally revolutionary, so it makes sense it would be some sort of motivation. So despite having a similar effect, it doesn't stick quite as well. Tetris is the same, I think, where it becomes an outlet for mastery in my mind despite just being a simple arcade puzzle game. I then elaborated on these thoughts in the Ease on Discord server. I think I finally found it. I described it as intensely emotional in the novel nostalgia video, and I think that's the very linchpin that defines its entire identity in my mind. Not necessarily the fact that it is emotional, Moss made me ball my eyes out, but it doesn't hold the same weight in my mind. It's the fact that it's emotional despite it not intending to be. That's the best way I can describe it, I think. An intention is just a silly little card game, just a little distraction for some fun and to brighten your day. For me though, it's so much more than that. It's a link to a community, to friends, it's an outlet for mastery, something I want to perfect. It's a place for exploration and expression, something I can mold and shape to anything I want to do with it. Whether it be waxing philosophical or just having some fun driving around. It's that disparity that gives the game its character, I think. It's the same for Mirror's Edge, to tie that back around. Mirror's Edge is a game about movement. There's a lot to the game, sure, but primarily it's about fun movement. The story is revolutionary and the primary movement in the game is something that can be done in real life. It's that disparity of intention to affect a smaller but the principal stance. For me, Mirror's Edge is a driving factor. My mind latches onto the fact that I could be moving like that in real life, that real life could have a revolution for the betterment of everyone, and it holds to that. The effect of the game is greater than the apparent intention. It's impossible to intentionally replicate that effect. It's impossible to intentionally choose to be more than what you wear on your sleeve. But with the perfect mix, you could come across as much more than you intended. It can only offer itself, but within itself is something much greater than the sum of its parts because I offer myself to the game each time. The game is not in isolation, nor is any other piece of art, and necessarily my perspective shifts how I personally view it, which leads to the effect being so much greater than the intention. It was incredibly satisfying to come to this conclusion in the same way it was to do with the novel nostalgia video. I love having this context to frame my favorite pieces of art around. Dark Souls is inherently about overcoming challenges. It was created expressly for that purpose, on top of delivering an interesting story and a fun gameplay experience. Where that diverges from my own experience with it, it was the challenges it helped me overcome, from depression to understand the very meaning of life itself. I'm not the only one with this experience with Dark Souls. Plenty of people have been helped by the game with depression, for example. Mario 64 is a link to a community in the same way CarQuest is, as well as being an outlet for mastery, though my ability among those who treat the game the same way is lacking, so the effect is much less extreme. Even Ocarina of Time connects me to my friends with our shared love of the game, and the experience of mastering a randomizer by memorizing every single item location and performing specific tricks to do things that weren't intended. I think even Sonic the Hedgehog, the character, and the franchise are so important to me because of something similar if not the exact same thing, as expressed in my Sonic in the Meaning of Life video. Something tells me Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima didn't intend to make a philosophical masterpiece when they came up with the fast blue hedgehog. So is that it? Is that finally everything that makes Car Quest so unique to me? Is that why Car Quest sticks in my mind so relentlessly? I don't think I can answer that question. I don't even know how I'd go about something like that, but I don't think so. I hope it isn't, at least. I love thinking about this, especially when the philosophy I spout is tied to a game I adore. So I'll leave off with this. Find something you can treat in the same way. Something that's just a silly little game, movie, book, painting, whatever for most people, but for you is something more. I implore everyone to have an intense emotional attachment to something, no matter how trivial. Enjoy what you enjoy, regardless of what it is, and don't let anyone stop you. <sighs> that one was interesting to come to a conclusion with and to finally form my thesis. Uh, but again, just like with the novel and sounds of video, as I've said time and time again, it's extremely satisfying to have come to a conclusion with this eventually. Um, whether or not there will be another overly philosophical video about Car Quest will remain to be seen, but, you know, uh, either way, this was fun. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I love you all, and I don't know how to end this.